It's the Stitches. Recently I did a video about Manhara and I showed you guys this little top. Little did you know though, you've seen this before. I, this is some sort of like 80s vintage sweater. It also has like a bunch of stains on it. It clearly got washed with something red at one point and then just kind of like absorbed it in like a couple splotches. I don't know if you can see on camera there's like a like a splotch right there. It can go. But it didn't go. It went to my scrap bin, only to be unearthed when I was suddenly desperate for crafting supplies. Our base has a few spots and a few holes, but nothing so bad that we can't work with it. Arguably another good practice piece that I can experiment with without worrying about ruining it. First I figured I would try this pink dye I picked up a little bit ago. I've never used this shade and to be honest, I don't think I'll be buying it again. The entire bottle only gave me this really subtle tint. To be fair, the original tags are gone from this garment and I have no idea what it's made of, so it might be an issue of just using the wrong kind of dye for whatever fiber it's made out of, but the purple I used had really no issues aside from a little bit of patchiness, so who knows. Here it is, all purple. For the decoration, I'll be using this patch that I bought from a local artist the last time I was in Olympia. The canvas the artist screen painted is surprisingly sturdy, so it can be stitched directly to the shirt. Some fabric patches, however, will need the edges surged and turned under first in order to prevent fraying. These laces have also been in my sewing stash for a long time and need to be used up. This is the perfect opportunity to give this patch some adorable textured trim. I thought about gathering this wider lace, but then I realized that pleating it would look a million times better. It takes a lot of pins to secure the pleats in place, but this will keep it all in place while I sew. Now this thin lace can be sewn on top of the wider lace pleats to make a softer transition in between the harsh black patch and the frilly pink lace. And that just gets stitched down. Fourteen-year-old me would have lost her mind over this project. Just saying. At this point, I was done filming my Menhera video and I just used it as is. However, we aren't quite done yet. This top still has a few holes that need to be darned. For darning, I put my machine on the widest zigzag and the longest stitch length. To cover the hole, you just have to sew back and forth across it until eventually the stitches fill it up. It's not super pretty, but it's super effective. My thread doesn't quite match, so it's still pretty visible. This is a visible mending technique. However, a matching thread will be practically invisible. This project was really fun to work on. Especially after my Menhara research, I've been really inspired to blend some darker motifs into my usual kawaii style. I also just really love this illustration. The artist is still a student and I don't think they have a shop or anything, but I'll include social media links anyway. Overall, this is a super easy DIY that really anyone can do. You can even get transfer paper and make your own patches out of your own art for embellishments, and you could even make ones with certain political messages if you plan on attending any of those protests going on right now. That's all for today's video. I hope everyone has a good day and please stay safe out there. I know there's just, there's a lot going on in the world right now, but hopefully I'll see you all next time. Bye.